Shanti. Good morning, everyone. Yesterday, we were reading the Murli of 12th June 1977. The title of the Murli was that Lotus like stage is the elevated seat of Brahmin life. In first part of the Murli, Baba described what is the Lotus like stage mean. It means to be loving and beyond the attraction of the physical organs whilst performing actions. Also, Baba explained that what does why lotus is given as an example because it is a symbol of family life. Then Baba explained the speciality of Brahmin life that a Brahmin is one whose thinking, speaking and doing are all the same. And then Baba explained the importance of the present time. That this is the time for earning an income for the entire cycle. This is the time to sow the seeds of elevated actions and to record the record of sanskars for 5,000 years. Then Baba explained that why we are not able to experience a form of power always. Because we take one or another limited support instead of the one support. We are not able to experience the form of power always. Then also Baba gave the formula to remain constantly cheerful. For that, we have to remain constantly beyond any attraction. So let's continue that Murli. Babdada meeting groups. Are the Pandavas and Shaktis both on the battlefield? Are you continuing to progress by gaining victory in your battle? Victorious souls constantly experience the happiness of their victory. Victorious souls constantly experience the happiness of their victory. Those who are who are victorious don't experience waves of sorrow. Sorrow is experienced when there is defeat. Victorious jewels remain constantly happy and cheerful. Let there not be a scene of sorrow coming even in your dreams. That is, let there not be any feeling of sorrow. Even in dreams, one can experience sorrow. Sometimes, when you have seen such a scene, there are dreams of sorrow, are there not? When your dreams are filled with happiness, you would definitely be an embodiment of happiness in the corporeal form. When your dreams are filled with happiness, you would definitely be an embodiment of happiness in the corporeal form. In singing praise of your virtues, would you say an embodiment of happiness or an embodiment of sorrow? Since the eternal form of the soul is of happiness, how could there be sorrow? When you move away from your eternal form, you experience sorrow. So, do you feel that you have put sorrow aside? Even whilst listening to the sorrows of others, 
you should not experience any sorrow because you know that this is the world of sorrow. This is very important here. Right? Even whilst listening to the sorrows of others, you should not experience any sorrow because you know that this is the world of sorrow. For you, the world of sorrow is over. For you, this is the benevolent age of the ascending stage. Even in your thoughts, you have raised your anchor and left the world of sorrow behind. If you are pulled towards relatives who cause sorrow or stressful situations for you, you should then understand that there are still subtle strings of sorrow. Why we are pulled towards the sorrowful or stressful situation? Because there are some subtle strings of sorrow. Have all the subtle strings broken or are there still some left? We need to check this. That Have all the subtle strings broken or are there still some left? Being pulled by this is the sign or recognition of the strings. If strings are tying you down, you cannot then move ahead. If you have not yet left the shores of the world of sorrow behind, you are not part of the confluence age. If you have not yet left the shores of the world of sorrow behind, you are not part of the confluence age. You are in between the iron and the confluence ages. You are neither here nor there. So what would your state be then? Sometimes here and sometimes there. You would not experience your intellect being stabilized in one place. Do you like wandering? Since you do not like it, then finish it. Constantly be stable in your form of happiness. When you speak, speak words of happiness. Think of matters of happiness and see the soul, an embodiment of happiness. When you speak, speak words of happiness Think of matters of happiness and see the soul, an embodiment of happiness. If you look at the body, consider it to be made up of the final elements filled with vices. This is why you should see the soul, an embodiment of happiness. You need to have such a practice. What practice we need to have? We have to see the soul who is an embodiment of happiness. And by looking at body, we have to consider it to be made up of five elements filled with vices. The golden aged deities are not aware of the word sorrow. If you were to ask them something of this, they would say, is there such a thing as sorrow? You have to develop these sanskars at this time. Create such sanskars that you no longer have any knowledge of the word sorrow. Which sanskar we have to create? Create such sanskars that you no longer have any knowledge of the word sorrow. As you have attainment, there is no effort required. Making effort for a few years in one birth to create the sanskars of ruling is not a big deal. 
it is just a little effort for a short time to create sanskars for a period of 5,000 years. The obstacles that come will not harm you because they are just coming to bid you farewell. See, if you will remember this, then you will not get afraid of the obstacles. Baba is saying the obstacles that come will not harm you because they are just coming to bid you farewell. However, if they stay with you, there is a loss. Let them come and go. Do not let obstacles sit down with you as your guest. Do not let obstacles sit down with you as your guests. You now need to make such effort that the obstacles simply come and go away. If you allow obstacles to become your guest time and again, that will then become a habit. They will then feel at home with you. Therefore, let them come and let them go. Do you feel mercy for Maya? Because she has been your guest for half a cycle. Now, do not feel mercy. Even now, you can experience the pilgrimage of remembrance even more deeply. Everyone speaks about this and stays in remembrance. But you now have to increase the attainment of remembrance. We are mostly talking about remembrance and staying in remembrance. But now we have to increase the attainment of remembrance. By giving more time for this and paying more attention to this, you will truly feel yourself to be submerged in the ocean of experience. Just as where there is purity, you feel an atmosphere of peace. So, elevated yogis are also those who remain deeply absorbed in love. Elevated yogis are those who remain deeply absorbed in love. Let there be this experience. Only when you experience this will there be an impact of knowledge and the success of yoga. Only when you experience this with deep love, then there will be an impact of knowledge and the success of yoga. Just as you go to the depth of the physical ocean, so do go deep into the ocean of experience. Have a new experience every day. Let there be attention paid to the pilgrimage of remembrance. Be introspective and continue to move forward. Even that is lacking. So we, will, we need to practice that. We need to be introspective and we have to pay attention to the pilgrimage of remembrance by experiencing new experiences every day. At present, there isn't the impact of being lost in remembrance while doing service. There is the impact of just serving. You now need to have the stage of being a constant yogi. Become engrossed in inventing a method for this. Become engrossed in inventing a method for this. Which method to a method to become a constant yogi? Run a race that has never been run before. Run the race of the experience of the pilgrimage of remembrance. 
those who conduct yoga camps have a very good chance to do this. You only have the one duty and none other. What is the only duty that we have? To remember Baba. So, you have only the one duty and none other. Through this, you can easily become free from obstacles. And the atmosphere can also change. This is the easy method to become free from obstacles and to change the atmosphere. When everyone is busy with the self, there is no time to look at or listen to others or to become weak due to obstacles. Make such plans that everyone is lost in the self. Whether it is the intoxication of the corporeal, a logic life or attainments, remain absorbed in this. In what we have to remain absorbed? In the intoxication of the corporeal, a logic life or attainments. Do not get caught up in any atmosphere and then spread such a wave. Om Shanti. Reflect on this slowly for a few minutes and we can share our channels. We will then share our journeys. Om Shanti, <clears throat> wonderful Murli, and uh, gives us the art of living in this confluence age. Because this confluence age is also one of the 21 births. And uh, Baba has uh, beautifully explained, uh, choice always remains with us whether we want to be an embodiment of happiness or embodiment of sorrow and uh, being a brahmin soul the uh, we, uh, we uh, the brahmin soul is not aware about the word sorrow because brahmin many will soon manifest as a deity so the golden age deities are not aware of the word sorrow that kind of sanskar has to be created right now where we don't have uh, no longer have any knowledge of the word sorrow. That is the effort uh, required. And Baba says, uh, Brahmin souls are full of attainments. So there is no effort even to, to do this. It's just it's the uh, that remembrance that I am full of attainments. And uh, this specific effort, this is specific attention, special attention will ensure that or during this uh, one birth, will uh, will ensure that we have created this and scars for a period of five thousand years. 
olmuş. Yeah, and that's why Baba says today that if there is a trace of sorrow or so that you experience, that's the checking for one to know whether you are in the conference age or still in the fan age. Correct, sister. Today, Baba told about some practice that we need to do. What are those? One is being a lotus flower in every uh, organ. Uh, need to be like a lotus flower, like beyond the attraction of the physical world and uh, detach from the limited consciousness and every organ is like if we're working with an with our hands then <clears throat> hands are mine but i am not the hand and i'm a soul who's using these hands to do a seva and so that consciousness that i am uh, detached from the physical organs <clears throat> i am always in my eternal happiness. I mean, that happiness. One is the lotus plant. Just to watch. Correct, brother. Also, Baba told to practice uh, seeing the soul, not the body. When we are seeing the body, we have to consider it as a uh, five element filled with vices. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, consider yourself to be a soul because when we consider ourselves as a soul, then all the eternal sanskars, they emerge. Right. They emerge and then we experience uh, this the stage which Baba wants us mm -hmm. to be. Correct. Then Baba says, do not feel mercy for the Maya. <clears throat> Sometimes we uh, show <clears throat> mercy that uh, uh, to Maya, which uh, Baba says we cannot afford, afford at this time. One has to be very, very disciplined as far as Maya is concerned because Maya is looking for ways and means uh, to bring down the states. So Maya is on a different war game, different kind of strategies which uh, for its own uh, benefits. Whereas soul is endeavoring to be a deity. So it's a totally a different, uh, they are opposites. So we should have to be very careful. We should not have any mercy towards the Maya. That's another attention. Very nice, Peter. Baba also told, uh, Baba was talking about the sanskar that we have to create. What is that? When you speak, speak words of happiness. Right. Always think of happiness and see the soul be an embodiment of happiness. Correct. Right. This practice we have to do. And also when sanskar 
particularly Baba was talking about? Baba was talking about uh, that create a sanskar where we don't have even that sorrow in our dictionary. I mean, we no, no, no longer have any knowledge of this word sorrow. What is sorrow? Right. Avidya, avidya. Just said, Baba says, Iksha matram avidya. Here Baba says, sorrow matram avidya. Means we don't even know what is sorrow. Right. That we don't longer have any knowledge of the word sorrow. This knowledge sense, of the word sorrow. Basically, mm -hmm. it means that uh, deep experiences, even in our dreams, we don't know what is sorrow. We are, we are so engrossed in happiness, joy, bliss, purity, knowledge and powers that we the sorrow will come where there is ignorance, where there is weakness, where there yeah. is uh, lack of knowledge or experience. If sorrow is coming, that means we are not yet created that sanskar, isn't it? Right. Having of no longer having knowledge of virtual. Right. You also mentioned about the sanskar of you know, building the sanskar of ruling on self in this conference age so that we can rule the rule the satyog and treta. Yes, yes. Uh, ruling on self is like the stage has to be elevated. In a, in a battlefield, if we are on the ground zero and like a warrior, if we are battling, then we are not in the effort. We have to be elevating our stage and be like a Mahavir on a on a elephant or even beyond on a, some kind of a plane where you are seeing the entire battlefield from the top. And then, so all these physical organs are also like kind of, uh, the body is like a, uh, a lower stage. And when considering ourselves as a soul, then we are on an elevated stage. Then we can see from top down, okay, what is actually happening? What is Maya trying to do? And we can understand the game, Maya's game. Correct. In today's Murli Baba has compared obstacles with something. What is that? Is that tying of the string example that Baba gives? Uh, that is in another part, but uh, specifically, specifically, Baba has compared obstacles with something, and uh, by doing that, we will become we can easily be the farewell to them. As guests, right? We have to. Uh, we we don't have to sit them with us as our guest. We have to bid them farewell as they come, and we don't have to let them sit with us. Uh, in other words, Baba says, "Don't offer them tea and right, water. isn't it?" Correct. <laughs> if we will do that, then they it will become a habit. Yeah, one of the recent Murli's Baba spoke about this. I don't remember which one. But uh, Maya ko chai, I think Sunday Abek Murli only, last to last Sunday. <clears throat> Baba also spoke about one running a race, you know, that right. of inventing a method for being a constant yogi, a stage of being a constant yogi. His Baba has told that try to experience new things every day. Run the race that never you have run before. And that's very interesting actually, sister. That just, just uh, 
if we uh, experience this, what is Baba trying to say? Baba is trying to be the in us to be the inventors, the researchers who 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 keep on finding, you know, continue to find the new ways and means, new methods, and the new methods for uh, finding out. Ways and means to basically get being in connection with the Baba, with uh, with Baba, uh, while doing the <clears throat> lockic roles. There is a deep secret Baba is trying to say: is everybody, everyone has that power of power to invent, power to create ideas which are which which can help to be a constant yogi, soul to be a constant yogi. So that invention itself is a very good word Baba has used where we have to keep experimenting with ourselves. Some Take some new ideas and then experiment and you know apply them and if it works, we should continue. Correct. And for that, being introspective can help. Yes, it's Because inventions will happen only through introspection. If we are outwards and extrovert, extrovert then we are not will not be able to be uh, inventor. <clears throat> Invention requires deep introspection and silence for five ten minutes. Then take our own stage. And then Baba used this word running a race. So here, <coughs> here, and that has never been done before. So that's the invention means running a race that has never been run before. Can you elaborate on this, sister? Can you repeat, brother? Baba has said that uh, inventing a method for this in the same paragraph become engrossed in. Inventing a method for this method means for this means for being a constant yogi, run a race that has never been run before. What is Baba trying to <coughs> uh, tell we children? Run a race that has never been run before. Uh, what I have understood is run the race means the uh, in the next line Baba has. Uh, mentioned that run the race of the experience of the pilgrimage of remembrance. So the experiences, the methods we are using for doing uh, pilgrimage of remembrance, we can try new new methods, new new techniques to connect with Bab Dada. And by doing that, we can race with ourselves that yesterday I was here, now today I am here. So we have to compare our stage of pilgrimage of remembrance. All right, okay. all right. I think what okay means what Baba is trying to say is what I have not experienced as a soul till now. Okay. I must experience that. Yes. The time is now. Time, all of the time is to experience, start experiencing those which I have not yet experienced in uh, remembrance of Baba. Isn't it? Yes, Baba. Om Shanti. Anyone else have any other reflection? Can please share? Om Shanti Ji, uh, Divine Family. Om Shanti uh, I just wanted to uh, clarify. Uh, Baba said, when you uh, take Brahman birth, then you become totally free from sorrow. Uh, I took uh, spiritual birth two years ago, and since then, uh, based upon my understanding, I'm trying my best. Every day I'm putting intense effort. Yes, I have seen a reduction into, in my um, degree of sorrow I used to experience before. So um, does it mean uh, 
as my understanding will grow uh, one day yes i can say now i am free from sorrow completely so does it mean there are some gaps in my understanding i don't understand everything or i'm doing something wrong or i'm not following right practices my method to implement are not right way so i am just checking myself where i went wrong because i still experience sorrow i get irritated i get upset okay so sir actually it is a journey that uh, slowly and gradually we can reach till that destination of being sorrowful and that's why baba told that run the race that you never run before so by doing that and experimenting with ourselves we will definitely reach there and for doing that we have to keep ourselves on the track of shrimat then only we can reach there so this is what my reflection is others can also share thank you and in our for example i'm reading sakar molni in the morning and uh, avyakt molni at this time how long does it take in order to complete one round um, for sakar as well as avyakt so i'm, I'm just thinking uh, after that i might be able to develop a complete understanding because there are so many things i still don't understand i mean how long it will take to complete sakar murli in one round as well as avyakt murli one cycle one round uh, what i know is it takes around 5 years for the uh, all sakar murlis to complete revise and same for avyakt murlis but it doesn't mean that after completing all murlis then only we can change we can it is a process that takes is gradually it will happen and we have to work on it regularly and slowly and gradually it will happen and also just adding reflection to that it's it's your own intoxication which you develop through your special attention and uh, constantly checking and changing like uh, for example in 24 our cycle of the day if you have experienced sorrow say seven times and remaining times you have experienced happiness or neutral no happiness no sorrow it's like neutral so those those seven times which you experience sorrow you will have to make an effort of deeply introspecting and replacing that sorrow with happiness using the jewels we which we are churning every day morning and when we use these techniques then and const and uh, uh, you know endeavor that uh, put that effort, special attention giving 5 minutes to your own self and deeply reflecting and re- tuning your brain your mind tuning your mind your intellect as per the as sister said as per baba shrimat baba shrimat is never experience sorrow the word doesn't exist for you so that's a shrimat and if we are uh, aligning or tuning our mind intellect as uh, with the shrimat then automatically we understand oh i was experiencing sorrow because of my ignorance of my eternal sanskar so they were merge that, that that moment so i must uh, consciously uh, through the remembrance of uh, baba i bring back my uh, that sanskar in a emerged form from merge to emerge so that's one technique we can apply those seven times we can reflect so next day it will be seven to say five it's a four three two one and the one day will come when then you are constantly experiencing uh, happiness only uh, sorrow will be just for the name sake but deeply you will be happy om okay thank you bhai thank you 
system. There are some sharings in the chat box. Radhamani sister has shared. The eternal form of the soul is of happiness. Don't treat obstacles as guests. Give farewell to it. Don't see the sorrow of others in the world of sorrow. This is also a very important point that Baba mentioned that even while listening to others people's sorrow, you should not feel sorrow because this is the world of sorrow. Then run the race of the experience of the pilgrimage of remembrance. Very nice, sister. Then Bichit Bhai has shared that children don't walk on the day they are born. It takes time. Initial stage of walking, falling down is common thing. With practice and growth, you will get there. Wonderful, brother. Thank you, Ji. Beautiful uh, idea, suggestions I will put into practice. Yeah, it's true. I need to be patient. I need to be, it, it takes time. If I, <laughs> it's true. Child does not work after taking birth. It takes time. Correct. <laughs> yes. Also, Baba tells me that don't become Dilshikas. This is a journey. You will rise and fall. So don't become Dilshikas. You will reach there. Because if we will not reach, then who will reach? Yeah, yeah. For example, I went for shopping yesterday. I was alone. And uh, I I got really, really upset. Why me? Why I have to do all the time? Going for shopping, loading, unloading, cooking, cleaning. I have to do. Why? Why? I was getting upset then. Immediately... Uh, I remember Baba point. Baba saying, "Karn karavan har karareha, chalan chalavan har chalareha." So when I brought that point to my memory, then my mind calmed down. That's See, one so example. This is last the change night. that is taking place, right? Yeah, and also um, I was noticing. Uh, if if someone has a little weakness, uh, I I worry and I try to magnify. I noticed yesterday and today too. So it means those old habits, old sanskar, they're still popping up and I'm acting on them. I think that's the biggest point I noticed today and last night. Noticing is the first step, right? So now you can work on it and finish it yeah okay. thank you thank you everyone thank you and there also is... you can, so you can uh, bring baba then baba let's let's uh, come and let's do the work together let's do the seva together so then that work will become seva like uh, shopping loading unloading cleaning and all that so you just uh, invoke uh, we can invoke Baba and uh, uh, then uh, make him as a uh, partner and you're not alone doing that task. Baba is there as your companion, which nobody else can see except you. I mean, it's like uh, your uh, superior self. I mean, your creator is with you. So then you will not have that feeling that uh, why I only have to do it. You both of you are doing together, talking to each other and doing it, experiencing happiness. Oh, that's and... beautiful. This is beautiful. Beautiful. It's called a combined form, right? Yeah, but that has to start a moment before you even do the task. Before, just a moment before that. You invoke Baba and then then start the task. Then see the feeling throughout the doing the task. And to, uh, at the end of the task, thank him. Thank him for the oh. wonderful experience of doing that task. Awesome. Thank you, Baiji. Thank you, Baiji. I will put in practice right now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sister. There is one announcement. On this Sunday, that is 3rd December, the BK sister Kavita will be conducting the class on ESC, Elevates, Elevate Soul Consciousness. 
So all of you are requested to attain the session. Now we will move to the meditation. Today we will reflect on the questions that Baba has asked by reflecting that have all the subtle strings are broken. Then we have to reflect on how we can become totally unaware of the knowledge of the word sorrow. And also reflect that by looking at anyone, where does my attention goes first? So we will stay in silence for a few minutes and reflect on this question. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Divine Family. See you all tomorrow at 5 a.m. Till that time, with the practice, what we have to do is see anyone who comes in front of us today as a soul who is an embodiment of happiness. Thank you. Om Shanti.